Close stance optimizes power. Boom. Puts the shot away. Like, shh, shh, shh. over. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Genius Tennis. Sean's going to replace your tennis coach. And this is going to be episode one of a footwork analysis video that I'm doing. I've actually meant to be doing footwork analysis videos as a new segment on this channel for a while because as you know footwork is a very vaguely defined it's practically completely undefined in the entire world of tennis mostly all you ever get are like random footwork drills most coaches can't even tell you the difference between open and closed stance okay but here genius has completely figured out footwork here there's literally if you're familiar with my work and again i've got upcoming footwork videos not even just footwork analysis videos, but explicit footwork lessons coming up. If you're familiar with my work and what I do, then you know that there are three exact things that hierarchically determine how you move on the court. This isn't an opinion, this isn't a coaching style. Literally, these are the three things that categorize, if you consciously look at the big picture of all footwork, you can use these three parameters to identify if this is met, then this is how the player is going to move on the court. Number one is the set of strokes being used. Number two is the court distance of the ball. And number three is the side distance of the ball. So if we have the same ball, meaning it's the same court distance, same side distance, but we're using a different stroke, literally, you're getting the same ball. So if you get the same exact ball, but you choose to use a different stroke, you're going to move differently. If you have the same stroke, and the same side distance, but the court distance is the same, so one's short and one's deep, you're gonna move differently. And finally, if you're using the same stroke and the court distance is the same, but the side distance is different, you're gonna move differently. And if you look on our webpage, that's literally how all the footwork is organized, but basically, we're going to get into quickly uh, analyzing this girl's footwork here. Funny how I came across this video, I was just looking up tennis in Korea, because Korea is like basically my dream location to eventually uh, either visit or maybe even possibly move to uh, the k-pop videos and culture have definitely gotten to me but i found some um tennis video of this 13 year old tennis player moving on the court so let's just go ahead and narrate how she's moving okay so she's about to serve okay as you can see there um let's go back a little bit she lifts her toe for the serve okay I'll, this is a very common practice in the tennis community Personally, I'm not for lifting the toe, but I know that there's plenty of pros that do it. Novak Djokovic does it. Nick Kyrgios lifts the toe on the serve. And Naomi Osaka, she lifts the toe on the serve. Federer doesn't, okay? So why am I personally against lifting the toe on the serve? Does it break the serve? No. But the purpose of the lower body, the legs and the hips in tennis, is to shift weight into the ball. And there's no other stroke in the entire sport of tennis where you lift your toe at all. Try lifting your toes on your forehand, doesn't work. Try lifting your toes on your backhand, doesn't work. But I, I really don't know where this came from, but for some reason we make the serve an exception to lift the toes. Another problem with lifting the toes on the serve is that when you shift weight back on racket back, which is step two of the serve, like this this uh, stance here where it's behind you and you're tossing, um, lifting the toes prevents you from being able to sink your knees further down into the court, okay? Whereas, contrary, if you lift the heels, like Federer does, like you can see in this picture here, where he lifts the front heel instead of the front toe, that allows you to sink into the back knee even more, okay? But still, uh, I watched a little bit of this video before I started recording, and the serve here is still pretty solid. I like it again, lifting the toe doesn't break the serve. Okay, so open stance forehands, as you guys know, uh, it's way better when the ball's deep, okay? Every time you get a deep forehand, it should be open stance. So many coaches are out there like just pushing close stance forehand, close stance forehand, close stance forehand. Here's the difference between open stance and close stance. Open stance optimizes directional control and close stance optimizes power. If you want to control direction with the close stance, you have to point your close stance, okay? A hack with the serve, since the serve starts off in close stance, is that you can point your close stance to whatever direction you want to hit the ball. Another pro of hitting forehands in open stance is you save time. Okay, open stance is the default stance that you're in when you're in ready position. It takes time to go to close stance. Even though the pro of close stance is that you get power, it takes time okay so you're risking um late preparation not even taking your racket back and being able to swing the ball to send in whatever whatever direction you want in time open stance forehands are optimal for when the ball is deep and you're actually going to see throughout this video that that's what this girl is doing like for most of her forehands unless she gets pulled to the court OK, 
Okay, very nice there. On the forehand, she does a jump, okay? Um, this is also something that is not very specifically emphasized in a lot of tennis training. And even in my forehand video, I don't talk about the jump as far as weight shift. So the weight shift in open stance is from center, side, center. Every single stroke is three steps, set up, racket back, swing. You're in ready position, then you take your racket back, and then you swing. And then um, what correlates with that, weight shift correlates with each step, okay, respectively. So in setup, your weight is centered, and racket back, you shift weight to one side, and then when you swing, you shift weight back to the center. What the jump does is your weight is centered, then you shift weight to the right, and then when you shift weight back to the middle, you actually jump. You push off of that side leg, which is what she did here. Okay? See exactly what I said. She goes in the close stance when the ball is short. You don't go in a close stance for everything. Every single short ball is closed stance unless the ball is high. In this case, the ball that she just hit was low. That's why she goes in the closed stance and she gallops around the ball to get into closed stance. Another thing that you can find in that upper right corner in that video where I talk about all the footwork in tennis. When it says all the footwork in tennis explained, that's not a joke, that's not a clickbait title. It is a clickbait title, but it's true. Like all the footwork is in that video, so I strongly encourage watching it. Again, deep forehand, open stance. She doesn't go into close stance, shifts weight from right to left as she swings. Shifts into the half open stance there. Open stance, half open stance, both of those are fine. The reason she goes to a little bit of half open stance um, has to do with direction. Even though open stance optimizes directional control, you can still point your open stance a little bit. The reason she points it to the right is so she can turn even more cross court to hit that powerful winner that, as you can see, her opponent is able to get to it all. And she closes the net because she knows that she's hitting an effective shot, and an effective shot is a shot that ungrounds your opponent, which means that they don't have any balance or control over the weight when they get to the ball. So even if he got to that ball, the next shot that he's going to hit is going to be very predictable. You never want to close the court if you hit an ineffective shot, which means you hit a shot that does nothing to the opponent. You hit a shot that the opponent doesn't even have to like, significantly throw their weight in order to get into. And that's a problem with a lot of 3-0, 3-5 players is that they don't know when to close the net. You don't. They, they just close the net whenever. They just think, I'm just going to hit this shot and invest in it. That's good when you're a beginner, but the next level is to understand when you've hit a shot that's actually good, that's actually going to pull the player off the court. And it is kind of like fighting where you have to feint and see how your opponent reacts. You have to get a, a feel for when your shot has actually been effective against an opponent. A shot that's effective against somebody that's like five foot six isn't necessarily going to be effective against someone that's five foot uh, six foot two because they're taller and faster. Or I'm, I'm being high discriminatory here, okay? It's all about speed, okay? Uh, if um, and a shot that will be effective against somebody who's slow is not going to be effective against someone who's fast. Okay, stretch into a gallop. When you're trying to get to the ball and it's slightly off, um, you stretch into a gallop. Let's look at that closely again, okay? So right here in this frame, she's doing small steps to approach the ball. See how right here, her open stance doesn't position her. She's not in a right position to get to the ball in time. So what she's gonna do, she's in this open stance right now from the small steps. And then with this right leg here, she's going to push off into a gallop over to the left. See that? She's in the middle of the gallop. She's in the air, slightly attached to the ground while she's hitting the ball. And then she lands off of that. So again, small steps stretch into a gallop right there and then she lands back into open stance. And then she does it again, but a smaller version of it. Slightly closed stance because the ball is a little bit short. Points over. Because again, closed stance optimizes power. So she's running through the backhand here instead of hitting a backhand slice, which is a good habit. A lot of players like myself who develop the backhand slice to get pretty lazy and decide to stretch into a slide, another footwork you can find in that video in the upper right corner, strongly suggest watching it, and all of the timestamps are in the description in that video. But usually when you get a really far backhand, 
the instinct is to just be lazy and slice through it, but I like how she runs through the backhand, okay? So you can run through your strokes, it's not the best thing, but she stays with using the topspin version of the forehand, not the slice, which is a good, hardworking practice. Okay. And then she stretches into a close for the approach forehand, which is actually an unusual approach, but she does it here because she's forced to. So again, again, this is exact footwork here. All of the footwork that I'm naming here is exact stuff. Not opinionated, not a coaching style. This is real stuff that just nobody has put in the time to identify, like quantify, name, define. It's all there, all in that video. But let's look at it again, okay? She's, guy hits a drop shot slice because she's really far away. She runs up to it, boom, 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 boom. And see how this right foot here is about to extend out, I think on this frame maybe. Yeah, it extends out, so she's stretching. And then this left foot here is going to come forwards as she swings at the same time, boom. See that? She starts her swing and steps forward at the same time. That's what a stretch into a close is, okay? And then um, it's a very forward moving footwork. And again, close stance optimizes power. She's transitioning into a close stance. So there, there honestly really isn't any reason why the point shouldn't have ended after that. Wish it did. Good approach shot. Close stance because the ball is a little bit short. And this one's actually a little bit funny too. She's aimed the shot inside out. So in a way, she's pointing her body to the right so she can set that shot up. Because she, she's going to hit the ball to the right, so she turns her stance even more to the right so that when she turns back to the left, she'll still be facing rightwards relative to the middle of the court. Okay. So she's coming into the court um, closed stance because the ball is about to bounce short, but because of the height of the ball, that's going to bring it back a little bit too high for her moment of impact in which she backs up again because she realizes even though the ball bounced short, it's coming high, which means I won't be able to hit it at my normal moment of impact, which means I need to back up. Whenever you back up 90% uh, of the time, you're doing it in closed stance, okay? You can open stance back up you can gallop back let me go back to when she's serving we're at 55 seconds right now we're gonna go back to when she's serving what you're gonna see is that right after she serves she gallops back she stays in open stance gallops back i think it's this serve see that she gallops back right after the serve so like 10 percent of the time you're going to back up by galloping in open stance 90 percent of the time let's go back to 55 seconds she is uh, and not just her, but like all players back up while in closed stance. So you never back up in open stance. 90% of the time you're going to be backing up in closed stance. And closed stance optimizes power. Boom. Puts a shot away. Like, shh, 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 over. Okay. Open stance backhand. When you are returning, you don't have time to go to close stance. Exactly what I said earlier in the video. Exactly, again, why open stances. You can hit open stance backhands, okay? In my own practice, when I teach my students backhands for the first time, they start in a close stance because you have two arms reaching across the body, which takes away from the length of your stroke, which demands a longer stroke. In that case, we lengthen the stroke by going in the close stance but eventually you want to be able to figure out how to hit open stance backhands. Djokovic hits open stance backhands, Serena Williams hits open stance backhands, okay? One of the problems with a lot of players' backhands is that they don't know how to hit open stance backhands. It's actually way easier to hit backhands inside out or cross court with open stance. Why? Because open stance optimizes directional control, okay? But when you're returning, you do not have time to go to close stance when the ball's coming straight at you. If it's away from you, for example, if she's on the deuce side, the only defense against the serve that goes down the tee is a reverse open stance backhand slice or a closed stance 
backhand slice, okay? But here the serve comes straight at her, and she doesn't have time to go into close stance. She's hitting a backhand. Again, most players like to hit their backhands in close stance. When you're returning, you don't have time for that. She stays in the open stance, and I believe she hits it inside out. Yep, inside out, back to the middle. Gallus back to the middle. Close stance, backhand, cross court, because the ball's a little bit short. And again, a close stance is better suited for the backhand than it is for the forehand, because you have less arm length for the backhand. You have a lot more arm length for the forehand. Nice. Closes into an open stance as she hits that backhand cross court. Again, we're going to go frame by frame here. Okay, so she takes that right foot over in a close stance, closes. She's in close stance right now as she's hitting the ball, shifting the weight forwards. Close stance, weight shift is forwards, forwards again. And then she transitions, takes that foot off the ground and goes into open stance. There's two ways you can close into an open stance, by actually peeking your foot off the ground or by dragging the foot. But the reason that she drags the entire foot is because she needs to rotate her hips more in order to send that ball cross court to the opponent's back end, which she does right here. And he slices it like I would normally do. So that time she actually drags her foot, okay? So again, slowly, she closes to open stance again. Her close stance is pointed where? Pointed to the right because your stance controls direction. She's trying to send it there again. And then she drags, see? Foot's already starting to drag right there. Foot is dragging, okay? Boom. Back to open stance. Foot drags a little bit there as well. Okay. Again, dragging of the foot. Really sharp shot. And then, what's going on here? Stretch into a gallop. Stretch into a gallop cross court. Barely missed it. Close stance, backhand, inside out. Points the stance to the left, executes inside out. Close stance is powerful. There's no denying it at all. Um, yeah, and it just ends the point. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, and that's the end of the video right there. So yeah, that's a complete footwork analysis video. As you can see, footwork is not some random thing. You shouldn't be doing random footwork drills. There are names for every single thing that this girl has executed on the court. Not just simple, like, you know, fluid, technical, motion, you know, light on the court, you know, all these um, buzzwords that you will hear in the tennis world. No, there are exact names for all the footwork on the court. There are exact times to use specific footwork on the court. Okay, so, so here's the thing when it comes to footwork is there's right footwork and there's optimal footwork. You want both, okay? You don't just want to be executing the right footwork. That's part one. Part two is using out of the right footwork the footwork that's the fastest, okay? Again, closed stance is slow as hell. Let's go back to let's go back to this return this backhand return if you see her going into close stance she's not going into close stance you don't have time okay so it's not just about right footwork but about the right footwork that's fast that prepares you in time for the situation okay but that's my entire footwork analysis video for this video right here if you enjoyed this please like subscribe share this engage with the video okay because it helps I'm trying to get this channel up to like, um, what do I need? 40K subscribers, no, 1K subscribers and 40,000 hours of watch time so we can get that YouTube monetization and once we get that running, we can do even bigger, greater videos like really long gear reviews. Nobody does really long gear reviews. Everyone just does like measly six minute long string reviews and 10 minute long rack reviews. Um, we're gonna do like the the whole enchilada here again. Okay? We're actually gonna customize rackets We're gonna test multiple tensions. We're gonna tell you which tension is best and alongside that it helps me um, Afford you know better hardware because right now we've got like a Ryzen 5 3600 X Which is nice and all but as you guys know the the 5000 series have come out and I'm trying to get a better GPU It, it all helps, you know um, Video edit better because I love making videos for you guys. I used to work at a club myself the reason that I quit is because you give the lesson, people return, they make the same mistakes because there's no material that helps them retain what they've learned to fix their game. And that's why I make these videos, that's why I built my website, that's why I built my social media, that's why I turned my entire coaching program into an actual organization, into an actual business, because an essential part of learning isn't just you know taking it in the first time, but actually retaining everything you learn, okay? So make sure you like, subscribe, share, comment and um yeah i'll see you guys for the next video thanks again for watching